Hi everyone, this is Alyssa with the Bluing Team, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use the magnetic lasso and paint fill tools to highlight structures in Photoshop CS6. For this demonstration, I'm going to be filling this temporal bone to highlight it. So the first thing that you do for this type of edit is go up to the layer menu and select new layer. I'm going to name this temporal and then hit OK. We want to make sure that when we're working with our tools to highlight this area that we have the temporal layer selected before we fill the selection with color. So we're going to be using the magnetic lasso again. I'm going to zoom in to make this a little bit more precise. I'm going to start making my selection right here and as I'm going along for this I'm just getting the rough outline of the bone. If this edit was going to be used in a presentation you would need to adhere to the boundaries of the bone exactly following the suture lines rather than how I'm doing it in this video. I'm going to speed up through the rest of making this selection. If you need more instruction on how to use the magnetic lasso, check out the background removal video on our channel where I go more in depth on how to use this tool. Now that we have the bone fully selected, I'm going to right click and choose the fill option, but instead of using the black like we did for removing the background, I'm going to select the color option. And for Blue Ink team members, there's a preset list of colors that you'll be using. To use one of these, just copy the color number. For osteological structures, we use blue. If you're not in the Blue Link team and are creating your own color, I would highly recommend taking note of this number just in case you need to replicate it in a future project. You can also see that in this document, it tells you what opacity the colors look best at. So I'm just gonna paste the color number into this box and hit okay to select the color. And then we're gonna go by the guide and set our opacity at 30% and just hit okay to apply the color through the entire selection. Now I'm going to deselect this area and you can see because we made these changes in the layer, we can hide the layer if we ever needed this original image again. So I'm going to use Command Z to undo my deselection and show a few more tricks for working with this layer of color. If we want to change the opacity of this layer, there are a few ways to do it. We can select the layer and go over to this opacity scale and move the dial down from 100%. The other way to do this is to use Command Alt Z to undo multiple changes until you get back to the unpainted version of your selection. So then you can right click, return to the fill menu, and we can lower the opacity of the color. So this second method is also the way that you would increase the opacity if you wanted to have your color be a little bit darker. So the last thing that I want to talk about is how to remove and add selections of color to more precisely highlight a structure. Now if I want to remove part of this color, I can go to the eraser tool, and if I'm in the right layer, I can erase a portion of the layer to remove some of the shading. I can also add in color by using a combination of the stamp and eraser tools. So first you take the clone stamp in the layer that you want to add color to, press option and then click to select the color. Click and hold as you go over the area and you can see that the tool doesn't go over itself in the same edit. Now you can see that there is a darker ring around where I stamped over the original color that I filled my selection with. To fix that, I'm going to use the eraser tool. I'm going to change its size so it's about the same size as the overlapping area. And I'm going to take the opacity down in the upper tool menu and we can go ahead and erase part of it. So this might be a little too much removed, so I'm going to undo it and take the opacity of the eraser down even more so we don't remove as much of the color. Again, this isn't as precise as a normal edit, but you can see how for the most part this darker region is being removed without changing the color of the layer surrounding it. And when you're working with an image that has multiple structures you would like to highlight, it's best to put each one in its own layer so it's easy to hide one or more of them if you need to for a future project. That wraps up this step in the Blue Link editing process. Thanks for watching and feel free to check out our channel for more tutorials and anatomy-based content.